the Guinness Book of World Records. You probably remember it for stuff like pictures of the world's biggest kangaroo or the world's fastest jetpack or world's greenest screen. And that's how the company used to make most of their money, by selling new books every year. But now they've got a whole new business model, selling publicity. Let me tell you what I mean. Here at Planet Money, we've had a lot of talented interns, but only one of them has ever broken a Guinness World Record. His name is Edward Saakashvili, and his story involves a British YouTuber, oh, hello. Fast Fingers, and the Georgian government. But before we go any further, let's first find out how the Guinness Brewery, like Guinness Beer, got into the record-breaking business. The year is 1951, and Sir Hugh Beaver, the managing director of the Guinness Beer Brewery, is out hunting with some friends. His target is the short-billed bird called the Golden Plover, but he keeps missing. So he pulls a classic move. He says, I bet this is the fastest game bird in all of Europe. And his friend is like, no, Hugh, the grouse is faster. And his other friend gets upset and says, no, it's the plover. Later that day, Sir Beaver is thinking about what happened at this shooting party and realizes that People are always arguing over questions like these in pubs, but there's no book that settles their fights with facts. And, you know, he didn't become a managing director at Guinness by missing out on business opportunities. So Sir Beaver calls Norris and Ross McWhorter, twin brothers who run a fact-checking agency in London, and he recruits their help. They compile a book of world records and print a thousand copies. And then they just give them away for free at pubs to break up bar fights, yes, but also as a promotional tool for the Guinness beer brand. The book becomes so popular that Guinness immediately realizes we could sell these books. Now remember Edward, our record-breaking intern? In 2011, he was 15 years old. And he was a huge fan of two things the Guinness World Record books, and this YouTuber, Charlie McDonnell. And one day he's watching a video and Charlie's like, Before I talk about the bungee jump, I want to talk about this. This thing here. Did I ever tell you that I have a Guinness World Record? Because I, I have a Guinness World Record. I'll forewarn you, it's pretty nerdy. I have the world record for typing the alphabet in the fastest time on an iPad. And Edward's like, whoa, that's really cool. I'm a fast typist. Maybe I could beat him. <laughs> And so, just for fun, he tries typing the alphabet on his own iPad. Mom! But you know sometimes when you tell your parents about something and they start to make a really big deal out of it? This happened to Edward. But like, times a million. You see, in 2011, Edward's dad was the president of Georgia. Atlanta, no, that's the other Georgia. Which seems like a huge thing for us to mention so late in this video, but well, there it is. Anyhow, he's super proud of his son, but he's also the president of this country, so he's thinking about super important national issues like trying to establish Georgia as a place for technological innovation. And he thinks Edward's Guinness record could fit into this. At the time, though, Guinness was in the middle of a major transformation. In 2001, the World Record Division had split off from Guinness Beer to become its own company. But not long after that, book sales started to decline. And that's when they realized, oh, the internet. Because how do you make money off an amazing photo of the world's largest omelet if anyone can just Google it for free? Well, I'm so glad you asked because that's the question we made this whole video to answer. Somewhere along the way, customers realized that they could get a lot of press coverage for breaking a record. And Guinness realized we could charge for this. So they started helping people figure out what records they could break and how to get media attention when they broke them. Of course, you can still submit your own record attempt for $5, but processing can take up to six months. So the Guinness World Records company went from making money by selling books to making money by helping people get press coverage. 
And press coverage was exactly what Edward's dad was looking for. He thought, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. Fly out again as judge, have a big official ceremony with lots of reporters, and make this into a major national news event. And so the day finally arrives, and 15-year-old Edward is nervous. He has to type the entire alphabet on an iPad in less than 6.31 seconds. His grandma is there. His great-grandma is there. They're wearing t-shirts that say Edward Saakashvili. Fastest time to type the alphabet on an iPad. The clock starts. The adjudicator walks over to the podium and announces, 5.26 seconds. He did it. He broke the record. After Edward's victory, Georgia News Channels ran it as their top item. Good evening. This is a Georgian news channel, and tonight's top story, President Shakaspili's son has broken a world record. Everyone found out. People were congratulating him left and right. Congratulations, Edward. Congratulations, Georgia. Edward started this in old school Guinness spirit. And then he kind of got sucked into Guinness's new business model. But in the end, Georgia got the press they wanted, Guinness got the money they wanted, and Edward got the record he wanted. Sadly, his record was broken after just four weeks. On the other hand, Edward did get to be a Planet Money intern just a few years later, so it was a happy ending after all. Also, you should look for Planet Money internship opportunities at n.pr slash interns.